This is the Goth House. The Goth family is just one of many beloved pre-existing Sims, or townies, in The Sims 4. Each has their own predetermined traits, characteristics, and looks. I've already done a mini-series tackling the Landgrab family estate in Oasis Springs and explained each family member's backstory and how they connect to previous Sims games. I'll link in the description box in case you're curious. Today, however, I'm remodeling the Goth family house in the upper center neighborhood of Willow Creek. It's not the wealthiest area, but it certainly isn't modest. In this household, we have Mortimer and Bella, with their two children, Cassandra and Alexander. Now, this is just my opinion, but I think they were modeled after the Adams family. I mean, Mortimer and Morticia are suspiciously similar and definitely not common names. Then there's Cassandra, with her signature pigtails, just like Wednesday's pigtail braids. Cassandra also has the gloomy trait and is always in a mood. Alexander is the dorky little brother, just like Pugsley. The goth family wears all black with red accents, and they live in a black Victorian home. They also have a mysterious, creepy, and kooky past and are always the talk of the town. I'm starting off by bulldozing the original EA built goth house, the one that I was previewing just now. In all fairness, it wasn't a bad house. We all know about the disaster that is World of Magic EA builds, but it could be better, especially with all the custom content I have installed in my computer. And I'm not ashamed to say I was nervous to do this build because I'm not the best at traditional roofing, and I put that in air quotes. I kind of cheated myself a bit and gave them some pretty large third and fourth floor rooftop balconies. So I wouldn't have to roof this giant house with weird angles. But when I say traditional roofing, I mean the type that you see in suburban homes with the gabled and half gabled roofs. I'm much better at modern builds that utilize a lot of flat roofing. I think it's easier. It depends on your building type. I know some simmers feel that traditional roofing is much easier to do than modern builds, but you know, we all have different strengths. This build is entirely base game and CC only. If you don't own all the expensive sims dlcs don't worry i got you because i don't either all of the custom content i use is free to download if you play on a computer if you'd like to download this build you can find it on the ea gallery by searching the hashtags professional woman child and the hashtag the crimson shade unfortunately you cannot use cc if you're playing on gaming consoles but i hope you still find this video inspiring and maybe you learned something new about the backstory of the goth family i will also do my best to link a majority of the cc i use in the description box below for your convenience. If you ever have any questions about where you can find a specific item, leave a comment and I'll be sure to get back to you. I've got the basic shell of the house down by now. I wanted to make sure it featured a tower. I don't know why, I just felt it was important they had a looming tower with a pointy roof. I also give them a wraparound front porch because the world is inspired by New Orleans. Not that the goth family cares about fitting in, but it's just nice when all the houses in the neighborhood look at least like they were built in similar styles. I'm not claiming this is exactly a New Orleans style home but it lends itself pretty well to the blend of other styles like Victorian, French Chateau, and medieval castle that I was going for. Now let's talk a bit about how the Goth family became so iconic in The Sims. The Goth lineage goes way back, even further than the Landgrabs, and have been around in every single installment of The Sims franchise since the first game released 24 years ago in 2000. Actually, the Goth family has a generations-long feud with the Landgrab family. The Sims timeline kind of jumps all over the place because because supposedly The Sims 3 game takes place 50 years before The Sims 2, The Sims 1 is like where it all starts, and then The Sims 4 is just completely an alternate universe. For the sake of this video, I'm only focusing on things they allude to in The Sims 4, but if you care to really dive into the goth family lore, I'll link my sources in the description box. It's much deeper and more interesting than the land grabs, so maybe I'll do a whole video on it in the future. Who knows? So I assume the Goths come from some sort of noble lineage because the first historical mention of the Goth name is in an ancient spellcasting book titled Lady Raven Dancer Goth's Book of Spells in The Sims 3. And basically, because magic runs in the veins of any Goth, weird stuff happens to them throughout the various Sims franchises. At one point, Bella Goth was abducted by aliens, ghosts haunt their manor, someone gets poisoned, another accidentally electrocutes themselves, and then subsequently starts a fire that kills another Goth family member. It's likely because of this tendency for horrifying deaths in the family that the EA built goth mansion has minimal electronics. Their house features the most expensive items in game and it feels very old fashioned in like a gaudy grandma 1800s way. I actually bumped up 
the possibilities for death a bit by adding a telescope on one of the balconies in my builds. If you really try, or you're just not paying attention when your sim uses a telescope, they can be crushed by a meteor. Anyways, the feud between the land grabs and goths begins in The Sims 3, when the goth family establishes the town of Sunset Valley, but the land grabs technically developed it. It's old money versus new money. I think this trope is reflected in the style and design of their homes too. The land grabs have a modern, sprawling mansion and are very flashy about their wealth, while the goth family lives in a large house but nothing extravagant. Their lot is an average size at 40 by 30 tiles, and from the exterior, it doesn't look too crazy besides the fact that it's all black. Let me quickly recap what I've been doing on screen and then I can finally start to introduce the characters that live here. I went in with windows from Felix Andre's Gothic Revival and Berlin collections and mix and match them a bit. Normally I don't like mixing and matching windows but these Gothic Revival ones are a bit much and it looked weird when I put them all over the house. I believe I also throw in a beautiful round window from his Paris set. Felix Andre is my favorite custom content creator for specific architectural styles. Like they have so many collections inspired by architecture from around the world and throughout different time periods and the attention to detail is crazy. They also have great CC in general, but I don't think anyone does period and country specific build items like Felix Andre. Oh, I also added a greenhouse bump out in the back of the house, which I love because the lighting on this lot is ass. While low lighting works for the goth family aesthetic, I'm glad they have a little pocket of sunshine with the sunroom. The roof on that bump out is glass ceiling with ironwork by Joyce's Fox. The glass windows surrounding the sunroom are from Peacemaker's Arcadia collection. I used some corbels from Felix Andre around the top of the tower just to add some architectural interest. It didn't do a whole lot, but something is better than nothing. The gargoyles are also from the Gothic Revival set. I went a little crazy with the gargoyles, but since everything is black and visually blends together, more is more, right? The tile flooring I use in all outdoor balcony and porch spaces from Pieri Sims Auntie Vera's bathroom set. I wanted a tile and thought for a quick second I would use some black and white checkered flooring, but that was very flashy and I didn't think that was something the goth family would do. I had to keep asking myself throughout this build, what would Bella and Morty do? <laughs> Moving along to the interior of the home, I use these gothic columns from, you guessed it, Felix Andre. They're for medium wall height only, but totally worth it in my opinion. I wanted a very traditionally wealthy layout. Does that make sense? Like there's a formal living and dining room and then the kitchen and breakfast nook are hidden from view because that's probably where hired help is. Upstairs, I fit a primary bedroom and ensuite for Bella and Mortimer, a secondary primary and ensuite for Cassandra, and a sizable bedroom for Alexander. There's also a hidden staircase that takes you up to the third floor, which is the study, and behind another hidden staircase in the study is access to the tower and upper balcony. But we'll come back to all of this later. Now let's get to know Mortimer Goth a little bit better. Mortimer Goth, as we first encounter him, is an adult, close to becoming an elder, and employed as a freelance article writer. His life aspiration is to be a renaissance sim, so he wants to be good at everything. It helps that he is a quick learner bonus trait. He's level four in the writing skill and has the outgoing, creative, and bookworm traits. Isn't that so cute? I always make my sims befriend Mortimer because he's a homie. Fun fact, Mortimer and Belagoth are some of the only sims to be featured in every single sims game. Real bad bitch energy. Because he's a writer and a bookworm, I scatter lots of books and bookcases throughout their home. I heavily rely on furnishings from Felix Andre's Gothic Revival set as well as 6MCC's Wednesday Adams Goth Bedroom set. And of course, to match the theme of the family, the house is entirely shades of black and burgundy with some warm chocolate and reddish woods as accents. I added a functional upright piano from Hey Harry's Coastal Collection because it felt rich and old timey. I was looking for candelabras in my CC collection but realized we have one in the base game that's perfect so I used that a few times throughout the home. This is the formal living room with a fireplace that actually lines up with the exterior chimney, which it doesn't need to be, but I know some people really care about that for realism, so you hoes better appreciate it. I finish it off with some expensive base game decor as nods to their noble origins, like the knight in shining armor statue and the mounted swords with the family crest. Now, as for Bella, her maiden name is Bachelor, meaning she's tied to another towny family that appeared in previous Sims games. Among other things, she's known for her trademark red dress and dark hair. She's a young adult, close to becoming an adult. Why did I say it like that? Close to becoming an adult 
and employed as an intelligence researcher. Her life aspiration is to be a party animal and she's got the good, family-oriented, and romantic traits. I mean, how can you not like Bella? No one in the Goth family is friends with other townies prior to the player's interactions, but it's easy for Bella to make friends because she has the gregarious bonus trait. And fun fact, the household description for the Goth family mentions that Bella sometimes disappears under mysterious circumstances. This statement is likely a reference to her working in the secret agent career as an intelligence researcher, as well as a nod to her abduction plotline in The Sims 2. Bella, where the hell have you been, loca? <laughs> Oh my god. Anyways, back to the build. I'm finishing up the dining room here. I gave them a ginormous banquet table because Bella is the life of the party and wants to entertain often. Although I imagine very few sims actually come to these parties because they're put off by the dark and creepy nature of their home. And I'm sure every sim knows about the goth's ties to magic. Those dark candle chandeliers above the table are from Felix Andre Chateau set, so they go perfectly with this build in the black and red swatch. I did add a bar in the dining room, but it's currently not functional and I've always wondered why when I place other bars in my builds they're functional and this one isn't, but I've realized that it's probably just backwards. I bet if you turn it around but still leave it against the wall, your sims can make drinks on there. I have not tested this yet, but that is my theory. I added a smaller dining table in the sunroom and there's tons of plants in there. I would love to have a room like this in my house. I would just sit there and read and imagine what it's like when it's raining in there. Guys, the screenshots in this build go crazy. The sunroom with the sunset sky peeking through the floor to ceiling windows windows and the glass roof is so moody. I'm so happy with how it turned out. The last five minutes of this video are entirely screenshots, which yes, it's a little excessive, but trust me, it's worth it. Here we have this humongous kitchen. I dream of having a kitchen this big, which is kind of silly because I don't even like cooking, but I just think big kitchens are so pretty and it feels like the heart of the home to me. All of the counters and cabinets are from Felix Andre's Chateau set, which has this atrocious reddish brown wood and black granite swatch, perfect for the goths. I love using this set for giant kitchens because it has a big range hood that can only be used on medium wall heights and it takes up a lot of space, but it feels very realistic. There's also some very large kitchen island pieces, a prep sink, and some counter variants to create a little pantry area. Pierre Sim has a new pantry set called Pantry Party that literally comes out for free use tomorrow and you best believe I'm downloading it as soon as it's available. Who doesn't love some good kitchen clutter items? Pantries are completely useless for your sims gameplay, but if you like building pretty houses like I do, then I'd argue they serve a purpose. The kitchen space was a lot bigger than I really needed, even though I did try to fill it up as much as possible, but I have to remind myself that not every single tile needs to have decor furnishings. It's okay to leave a little breathing room. I did add a little seat by the window because it wouldn't be a build by me unless there were chairs tucked into every corner. I can't help it, I just appreciate a well-designed and pretty chair, okay? While I decorate the kitchen, let me quickly introduce Cassandra Goth. She is the oldest and only daughter to Bella and Mortimer. She's currently a teenager, but very close to aging up to a young adult. Cassandra Sandra doesn't have the best grades, but she's passing, okay? C's get degrees. Her life aspiration is to be a musical genius, and she already has reached the level two of the violin skill. This might sound very familiar to you if you've watched the Tim Burton Wednesday series on Netflix, but actually this version of Cassandra Goth has existed since 2014 when The Sims 4 first released. Cassandra has the creative, muser, and gloomy character traits, meaning she cries like nonstop. And there's absolutely no shame in that, like I can relate, but girls just down bad. You'll see in the screenshots, there was a point where I was trying to get some shots of the primary bathroom and she just autonomously walked in, drew herself a bubble bath, and then sat there and cried in the tub. <laughs> now returning to the build, I did go ham on the kitchen clutter, but I play tested it and your sims can still cook in here. Normally if you place items on counters, your sims won't register there being enough space to prep food, but because I used the alt key when placing some of the decorations, the game doesn't think there's anything on the counters. This doesn't always work, but I guess I guess I got lucky this time because I'll admit, I really didn't think about having space to prep food until later. I mean, I did leave the end piece by the main sink free of anything, but I don't actually know if it's big enough for your sims to use for food prep. Regardless, it worked out, and now we are moving on to the second floor of the manor. I'm starting by hiding the door to the third floor in these bookshelves from the Chateau set. This set came out last year, and I still have so much fun using these pieces. I love a good hidden door. That's another wishlist item for my future home in real life. I add a portrait of Morticia 
Alicia Adams from 6MCC's Wednesday Goth bedroom set in the hallway as a nod to the family they were based on. Maybe the Adams family is related to the Goth family, like ancestors or something? In this item, there's a swatch for every member of the family, so I add the version of Gomez in Alexander's room and the version of Wednesday in Cassandra's. But poor Pugsley's portrait didn't make the cut. Moving swiftly along into the primary bedroom, I grabbed this dramatic bed and jacquard bedding from Felix Andre's Georgian set. I mixed together a lot of colonial, Chippendale, Gothic, and Georgian pieces in this room. They also get a fireplace to define the fact that this is indeed the primary suite and not the secondary primary suite. I don't typically use room dividers in my builds as much as I always think I'm going to, but here I use this one from Pierre Sims Domaine du Claw to give your sim some privacy when getting dressed in the morning, especially with those large gothic windows facing their neighbor's house. Not that your sims actually care about privacy, but it's a thought that counts. I had so much empty floor space in here and felt like I needed to fill it up with rugs to make it feel more inviting. It was fine that the other areas of the home felt looming and dark, but I wanted the bedrooms to feel cozy and inviting. I so badly wanted these layered rugs to work, but I think it's an art form I'm still working on perfecting. So I opted for this rug from Hey Harry and Felix Andre's Organic set and just sized it down once to fit in front of the fire to create a separate sitting area. The chairs I grabbed to put by the fire are these really uncomfortable looking ones from Felix Andre's London set. They have these straight backs and don't look very plush, but the color swatches worked perfectly. And I needed some furniture with sharp edges to match the energy of this house. Because to me, this house requires sharp angles, unconventional items, and macabre decor. Speaking of macabre, I've been hiding these little skulls from 6 and CC's Wednesday goth bedroom set in almost every room. And I put one on the bedside table in here. It's just a fun little hide and seek game purely just for shits and gigs. And now, as I furnish his childhood bedroom, I will introduce you all to Alexander Goth. Little Alex is a child sim here, but relatively close in age to his sister Cassandra. His life aspiration is to be a whiz kid, but that will change as he ages up to an adult. His only other trait is that he's a bookworm, just like his sister and father, although he does have some points in creativity, mental, motor, and social skills. In previous Sims games, Alexander was much younger than Cassandra and was a child sim when his parents were elders. However, in The Sims 4, we we know Bella and Mortimer were high school sweethearts from the high school year's expansion pack promotional material. So perhaps they got started on building their family young. For Alexander's room, I used a really cool spiderweb bed and rug from the Wednesday goth bedroom set. I've been itching to use these funky shelves from the Clutter Cat's somewhat new On The Edge collection, but they're very modern and look like they come from a designer furniture store. However, I was able to sneak a small corner shelf in here and use it to display some toys. Since he wants to be a whiz kid, I gave him a kid's science table. I figured he can practice brewing potions as a nod to his magical heritage or just practice building bombs or something, I don't know. I made sure to add another smoke detector in here because these tables will notoriously catch on fire and the goth fam was already traumatized from fires enough as it is. Cassandra gets the room directly beneath the third and fourth floor tower, so she has the corner room. It's actually slightly smaller than her brother's, but the trade-off is that she has her own bathroom. I position her bed against the windows in the corner of the room and furnish her dresser drawers with clutter that shows her personality. I was excited I got to use the skeleton doll from base game on her dresser. I I don't think I've ever used that before. I give her a black acoustic guitar to help with her musical genius aspiration. And remember, there's a piano downstairs but I regret not also giving her a violin. Again, everything here is very black and red and maintains the mix of colonial, French, Gothic, and Chippendale furniture seen throughout the rest of the house. The wallpaper is from Piri Sims' new combo set. Oh, I also added the miniature boat model in the black and red swatch in here as a nod to the previous EA build house. I cut out all the bathrooms except for the primary from the speed build portion of this video, not because they're boring and all the same, but because this video would be significantly longer if I didn't. I'm still on the fence about the length of my videos. Personally, I like watching long Sims videos because I usually watch them on 1.5 speed, but I know not everybody does that. Let me know what you guys prefer. Do you like short 10 minute build videos around 20 minutes or videos 30 minutes and longer? Let me know in the comments. You could probably fit a whole other bedroom in this primary bathroom. It's so big. I gave them a separate poop room, which is typical in a luxury bathroom and is so nice, especially when you share a bathroom with your partner. 
partner. And then I split the bathroom up some more and instead of a doorway, I used columns and the same base game spandrels I used on the front porch outside to lead you into the bathing area. It's really just to add some decorative pizzazz and glam, otherwise doing this in bathrooms is a huge waste of space. But we don't have to worry about wasting space in here because we have plenty of it. Bella gets her own vanity table, which is from the Clutter Cat Sunny Sunday collection. I had various clutter items to make it look like it's actually in use and line up some wigs on top. I don't think Bella wears wigs, but honestly, the vanity and wall behind it was looking empty. And now onto the third floor, the study. We are almost there, guys. This is technically Mortimer's office since he's a bibliophile and writer, but I guess it's also the shared family computer room. I don't like putting computers in my Sims rooms because I like seeing them interact with one another in shared spaces. And whenever there's a computer in a house, every Sim will autonomously play on it all day, which isn't great for my purposes with screenshots. So selfishly, I put them in communal spaces. It is funny though how I'm complaining that all my sims want to do is play video games when I'm sat here at my brother's computer in his room building and editing videos every free moment I get like my sims are just me. I wrap the chateau buildable bookcases around a majority of the room and stick another one of those hidden bookcase doors where the ladder to the upper balcony is. There's also a bathroom attached to the study but you'll see it in the screenshots. Besides just putting books neat and orderly on the shelves, I also scatter them in piles on the floor. It feels much more lived in and realistic. I also tried to layer some rugs up here and I really liked the way it looked, so I was excited about that. And through the glass French doors attached to this study, you have access to the first balcony, which features a hot tub, lounge chairs, an outdoor dining table, and some gardening pots. If you watch until the end of this video, you might see it get a little steamy in the hot tub. All I'm gonna say is this game is rated T for teens, okay? <laughs> I didn't add much to the fourth floor tower. I originally planned for it to be a storage room, but it's such a small space. I wanted to make sure your Sims could still walk around things and out to the balcony. So I just stuck two chairs and a lamp in there because when in doubt, add chairs. <laughs> the upper balcony is kind of for skill building. We've got a card table, a punching bag, telescope, and more gardening pots. The punching bag was a random last minute addition and doesn't really relate to the goth character traits, but it was red and matched theme. Also, it never hurts to have more skill building items on your lot. I saved finishing the landscaping for last because it is currently my least favorite part of building. Also the terrain paint deletes when you load in and out of the lot in build mode so it cannot be trusted until the very last minute. Quick build tip, if your house is on a foundation and you're having trouble landscaping because the plants want to clip to the height of your first floor, lower the house to ground level and scoot the plants close to the wall. It doesn't matter if it clips because when you finish landscaping and raise the house up on a foundation again, the plants will just clip into the foundation, which won't show in your walls down view. I add some trash cans out back, a fancy stair edge to my stone steps from the chateau set, and that's pretty much it for this build. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to download this build, it's up on the EA gallery right now. You can find it by searching the EA ID professional woman child or searching the hashtags professional woman child and the hashtag the crimson shade. All of this info is copied in the description box as well as a majority of the CC I use in this build for your convenience. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. It would mean the world to me and I will talk to you all in my next video. Enjoy the screenshots.